Hey, good morning, everybody. Shh. Right. I only want to hear the sound of eating now, okay? Uh, because we're going to start. Um, uh, a very, very big welcome to everybody, to our distinguished guests who've made it here today, and also some people who have been very last-minute replacements because uh, there was a problem with Eurostar yesterday. So um, I'm really grateful to companies and personnel for just pulling out all the stops and making sure that we could still have uh, the right number of speakers from the organisations that we decided we wanted to showcase. So thank you. So welcome to EIF members and to fellow MEP Pilar. And um, apparently there is a, an ex-MEP in here who I don't know, but very it's Edit. Yeah, welcome to Edit too. It's really nice when um, when parliamentarians continue to show an interest in um, in the work that we're doing here. So welcome. Um, uh, this is a debate. This debate is happening because um, this is the year for uh, European development, and I feel it's very important that development. We look at development across all our different areas of interest and across all our committees. Um, so uh, I'm particularly pleased that I'm hosting this breakfast. Um, I am a student of education and international development and it's one of the things that gave me the confidence and the knowledge to put my name forward for elected uh, position. Um, I, I realised something when I was studying uh, when I was studying my master's, and I'd never done a first degree, so I went in and I uh, went in in my early 50s straight into doing a master's, and this was the master's I chose. Um, but I realised something really important about the link between legislation and rights um, enshrined in documents that people had dis discussed, debated, uh, considered, talked about, and then agreed, and how nothing in the world would ever change about poverty unless it was written down and it was agreed. Um, and so to bring, to now be here as an elected MEP, I feel a bit emotional about this, but I've been in the job a year and I wasn't a politician before. So to have been able to put those, to put that together, to put those things together in my head and now to be here doing this, to be here in this house as a co-legislator, um, pushing forward the agendas, the social agendas that I feel are really, really important and help not just Europeans but everybody around the world to live more sustainable lives within um, democratic free societies. I feel really, really uh, pleased to be able to host this particular breakfast. Um, I'm a champion for civil society as well. So having a mix of people in the room, there is, I know that UNPO are here, the Organisation for un, Unrepresented Peoples, yes, and I do a lot of work with UNPO, so if you don't know their work, I want to point you out specifically today that people can come and chat to you at some point maybe and find out about the work that you do, because whilst Pilar and I might be representing specific constituencies of people within Europe um, and other uh, and other people are representing are representing their people. There are so many groups still in the world who are unrepresented and don't have a voice. So it's really good that you're here too. Um, when when I was studying my uh, my masters at Newcastle upon Tyne, um, I took a module on ICT for development. Uh, and my teacher was um, Sugata Mitra, who some of you might know. And if you don't know, find out about him. He is credited with being the inspiration between, be, behind Slumdog Millionaire, the amazing film. He um, worked in Delhi in a high in a high tech, um, da you know, digital data information uh, society uh, organisation. Can't remember the name of it, but he was in this fairly flashy building every day. And that when he looked out outside the windows, uh, beyond the perimeter wall, all he, all he could see was the slums. And he was working on pioneering technology you know, to, uh, for business. And he just had a thought, what would happen if I put a computer in the wall between our world here, our privileged wall here, and the wall that 
separates us from the people in the slums. And he put a computer into the wall and he turned it towards the um, the slums. And he didn't he didn't do anything else. He just left it there. And the people in that slum, the children in that place, learnt how to use technology, how to use computers. And obviously the language was English and they spoke they spoke their native languages and they taught themselves how to use technology and he was my teacher and I am indebted really to him for giving me the confidence to believe that ICT um, can work for all of us because the stories that the the research that he then went on to do was extraordinary and the way that he has continued to promote ICT as a tool for lifting people out of poverty um, is really important. I think he's now teaching at MIT at Massachusetts Institute of Technology but please please check out his work because he's a very key figure in my personal development on this journey Um, uh, European Union we give, obviously we're one of the biggest um, givers of aid and I think it's really important that that's not just about money but that's also about ideas it's a generosity of ideas that we need to have as well to be sharing our uh, our ideas um, and also uh, learning from the communities that we're trying to support and help because they're full of ideas too. Uh, in worlds where people's backs are against the wall, they are often more entrepreneurial than we are and we have much to learn from the developing world. So it needs to be a two-way process. Um, I also want to highlight uh, women and empowerment. It's very important for me. I'm on the Gender Equality and Women's Rights Committee and I am very uh, vocal about promoting women in uh, in STEM subjects but I always put the A in and turn it into STEAM because my own background is arts and creativity and actually I think we need both and we can't go forward on the kind of narrow minded science agenda unless we remember that creativity and arts and all those cultural tools um, help to help to make that just help to bring a greater richness to that, they bring the ideas, the innovation the cooperation the problem solving that we all need as well Um, but I was at the WISIS um, forum the World Summit on Information Technology in Geneva where I met Ifat and where uh, I think some other people were there with some some of the rest of you at WISIS and I just have a particular issue with with WISIS and I need to share it to you and it's one of the reasons why the panel is as it is today Um, that one of the opening um, speeches which was a high level policy debate that was going on uh, where they the, the speakers laid down a whole load of stuff that they felt was, that was really really important and um, said that gender inequality was one of these and they didn't have one single woman on the panel mm-hmm. right? not one single woman on the panel, we had gone as a fem mission from here right? and it wasn't uh, it was not a debate actually, it was just statements so we couldn't even say anything about it we were furious so we started taking pictures we madly took pictures and we started tweeting so that they would be publicly shamed and in the afternoon they brought some women onto the panel <laughs> uh, and I urge all of you right, wherever you are whenever you are look at the diversity of the panels who are speaking to you and see if it represents our world and if it doesn't say something about it because um, if you're whatever position you're in, social media is a great way to out people. Right? Twitter is a wonderful way to shame people into doing the things that they should be doing. Actually, if you've got a complaint with a telephone company, just tweet and they'll they'll sort it out. <laughs> yes, I'm a troublemaker. Yeah, troublemaker now. I'm an agitator, a campaigner. Anyway, I'd just like to say thanks to Joanna from EIF for putting up with me. Okay, I know, I know that, I've, that it's been quite difficult, but I really, really appreciate you uh, taking on board my values, my ethos, and the things that I think really matter um, within this. And also Anya from e- ESOA. And I um, hope to have a really long-term fruitful relationship with EIF and its stakeholders. Um, uh, just... 
Uh, there's a booklet, yes, that was the other thing I was supposed to tell you. Right, and this is great. This is really, really good. I, I proposed uh, this particular breakfast, but I didn't know we were going to get all this amazing stuff as well. So there's a really fantastic booklet here, uh, which gives some great examples of projects, because we can't talk about it all this morning. But I hope that what we do this morning is begin a conversation that we can continue to have. Um, so we've got speaking for us this morning, Catherine Flu- Fluva. Did I say it right, Catherine? Um, who's the head of CSR Africa and Middle East for Orange? We also have Stephen Ramage, I hope, um, who's director of strategy for What Three Words, uh, which is a um, uh, an amazing new company that are doing uh, really interesting things. Uh, but he couldn't come, so he's on the machine. Okay. So when we get to that bit, Omri will. Um, We'll bring him into the conversation. Artie Holler from ESOA, who we've met before, and he's here at short notice. And we also have Roberto Rodolfo, who's the Director of Sustainable Growth and Development for DG DEVCO the Commission. So, Catherine, would you uh, like to take the floor first? Okay. Thank you. 